Hey everybody, this is Reapy Ron, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a, another look at tier 3 weapons with, uh, well, within Killing Floor 2. Um, so the, I did, last time I did how good the weapons are if you were to keep them and fully upgrade them. This time we're going to be looking at how good they are unupgraded. So I'm not going to be going over all the stats that we did in the first video. But I will be uh, telling you where I'd place these if you were to take them and not upgrade them. Assuming that you're going for another weapon. Um, so let's begin. We're gonna, just going to go down the class line. Uh, first up is Berserker. So let's bring up the Hemoclobber here. The Hemoclobber is pretty crazy. It weighs 4. It fits into tons of loadouts. It has high damage already. And it has the ability to heal you and your team. And clear small things. And add toxic to stuff. Um, for 4 weight, this thing is absolutely stupid. And it's going up to S tier. It doesn't need upgrades. With upgrades, it just gets better. But even without upgrades, it's still pretty, really good, I would say. Also, it just it fits with any Berserker weapon, which also just makes it such a flexible weapon to put into anything. Um, let's see. Then we have the Pulverizer. Pulverizer, unupgraded. Um, most of the time, I'm assuming that when you're unupgrading these things, you're buying them as your uh, weapon as soon as you can, so you can't upgrade them. And you likely won't be carrying a second weapon, or if you did, it's like an off-perk weapon that you picked up off the ground, like one of the tier 1 weapons. Um, so Pulverizer is still a pretty good option. It does high damage, um, really high damage towards Flesh Pounds. Uh, six weight is still fine. You can put lots of things with that. Um, it parries pretty well. This one is also a pretty good uh, tier 3 weapon. Um, not as good as the Hemoclobber, but still pretty strong. Um, unupgraded, I actually don't usually upgrade this weapon. Unupgraded, it's still pretty good. I think it's probably A tier. It's a pretty decent weapon. Up next, we have Zweihander. Uh, Zweihander is one of the weapons that actually is better, uh, unupgraded than upgraded because it weighs 7 and it does a really high amount of damage with its heavy attack. Its light attack also does pretty decent damage. Um, this one's probably also going to go to S tier, unupgraded. It's actually a pretty good weapon to grab. Um... It doesn't scale as well as some other weapons, so I wouldn't recommend throwing upgrades into it, but it's still really strong. Oh yeah, and then we have the Frostfang. The Frostfang is pretty ridiculous without upgrades and even more ridiculous with upgrades. It's probably also going to go into S tier. Being able to freeze things, having a ranged weapon with Berserker, hitting stuff harder when it's frozen, um, being able to parry with your ranged weapon is all great, and it... Go, it has 7 weight, so 7 weight is fine. You can put quite a few weapons with it, and you don't need to throw upgrades into it. It's still really good without upgrades. So, yeah, I'm going to put that into S tier. So Berserker starts out the tier list quite strong. Um, they did before uh, with upgrades, but they seem to be even stronger without upgrades, in my opinion. So uh, let's move on to Commando. And let's talk about the AK first. The AK is actually a weapon that really doesn't need upgrades. It hits a pretty good uh, amount of damage without upgrades, doing 40 damage per, uh, per shot. And it has a really high uh, damage per second with its burst fire mode. Um, this is another weapon that I think is better unupgraded because it's only 6 weight. So you can fit it into way more loadouts at 6 weight than you would with upgrades. And it's pretty solid. Um, for commando unupgraded, this is probably it's either very high a tier or low s tier i'm not really sure because like i don't throw upgrades into the ak and i'm never disappointed with it um when i throw upgrades into the ak i'm kind of disappointed because it doesn't necessarily get any better um uh, so i'd say it's it's probably either high a tier or low s tier it's one of commando's probably best weapons unupgraded uh, the MKB-42 does pretty high damage per shot. Uh, it scales, um, it weighs 7, which isn't the easiest to work around, but it's still not the hardest. Um, this is a weapon that also benefits from not upgrading it, I would say, because it hits enough damage unupgraded. Um, upgrades are okay with it, but not really necessary. Uh, I think I put this one maybe into A tier as well, but lower than the AK for sure. Uh, the M16 is also another weapon that doesn't need upgrades. It already does pretty good damage, um, both with its regular fire and with its grenade launcher. It's a pretty consistent weapon overall. And um, 
again, it's at what six weight, six weight is really good. Six weight allows you to take quite a few weapons. It's just a really good gun by itself. I'm going to put it right next to the AK. I'm, I'm pretty sure both of these are like top of A tier or low S tier. They're quite good. All right, up next we have support. So let's talk about the Frost Fang. Uh, the Frost Fang is still pretty strong. Um, you can throw upgrades into it. You don't need to keep it low weight with support because you have so much weight. Seven is still fine if you want to take quite a few guns. Um, so, and still the ability to freeze and the ability to parry and block is really nice. Um, you don't need to upgrade this either. I think it'd be lower S tier for um, support than it is for Berserker, but still around S tier. I would say maybe low A tier or maybe a uh, high A tier just depends. Um, let's see. They have the, uh, M4 shotgun. The M4 shotgun is pretty good too. It has pretty consistent damage. It gets more consistent with levels, but it doesn't need them. Um, weight isn't an issue with support, but picking it up early isn't a bad idea either. I think we're going to put the M4 probably into the middle of A tier. It's pretty good. I mean, it's it's pretty good overall, and then it just gets better with uh, upgrades. So that's why I moved it high to A tier in the other list. So I, I don't think it really leaves A tier. It's still just good. Oh, yes. And then the medic shotgun. The medic shotgun is probably medic's best weapon unupgraded because you don't need to upgrade it. It does what it's supposed to do, which is pretty high ish damage per second to crowds. Um, it has the ability to heal, which is nice. And at six weight, it fits into so many areas. This one's probably S tier unupgraded. It's really good. You don't need to upgrade it. Um, very good weapon on support. Then we've got the bug shots. The bug shots unupgraded. You can get them fairly quick because you can buy one of them. And one bug shot unupgraded is actually really good early on. And I would probably put it into like A tier. Um, but the dual bug shots unupgraded. They're at four weight, so they fit nicely. Um, you could take them pretty much as like a sidearm just to kill trash stuff with. And unupgraded, they're pretty decent. Um, I'd probably put them into B tier unupgraded. Not as good as like the other support weapons, but still pretty decent unupgraded. I wouldn't bother throwing upgrades into them. They're just not worth it. All right, medic next. So let's talk about the medic shotgun again. Medic shotgun is probably still S tier. Um... You don't need to throw upgrades in the medic shotgun. It does enough damage by itself without upgrades. You can still heal with it. At a, at a weight of six, you're very flexible in what you can take. So it's still probably S tier. Um, the other weapon we've got is the heal thrower. And this weighs seven, which is a little bit more awkward. Um, it is cheaper than the other tier three weapons, though. And for that alone, I think that helps it out quite a bit. Um, still being able to heal and poison enemies is great. Uh, well, heal allies, poison enemies. That's still pretty good. Um, I think it's better unupgraded than it is upgraded, really. I would put this one probably B tier as well. It's pretty decent if you don't want to throw upgrades into it. Maybe not as good as like the buckshots in comparison, but still pretty decent. The Hemoclobber for Medic unupgraded is still pretty good. It weighs four. You can block with it. It does good damage. Um, it feels about the same upgraded or unupgraded, so I'd probably put it like into A tier for Medic. Um, S tier for Berserker, A tier for Medic, though. Uh, then, let's see, we have... Uh, oh yeah, the M16 for Demo. The M16 for Demo is pretty good, too. It has pretty consistent damage towards small things. Its grenade is okay. Um, it weighs 6, which is great for Demo. That allows you much more flexibility. And it really doesn't need upgrades, so I think I'd probably still keep it into A tier. It's it's still pretty good for demo. It's probably lower A tier for demo than it is for commando, though. Um, still a pretty good weapon, though. Uh, all right, let's talk about the uh, kaboom stick. The kaboom stick is crazy. It has really high damage. It only weighs six, making it really flexible. Gives demo increased mobility, which is crazy. This thing is like top of S tier. Like the like these two can really switch because they just do their jobs so well. So yeah, it's it's S tier. It's crazy. Seal squeal, um, unupgraded weighs seven. It still does really high damage. Um, usually more than enough damage to kill most things that you're gonna use with it. 
It doesn't need to be upgraded. Its upgrades just kind of give it more damage, but unupgraded is still pretty good. Um, probably A tier as well. There's quite a few weapons that are tier 3 weapons that I'm actually putting rather high on upgraded. Because I think a lot of them actually benefit from not being upgraded, or when they are upgraded, they just benefit even more. So, the other demo weapon is Pulverizer. And unupgraded, you're probably assuming you're going to buy this right away. You don't want to buy the Pulverizer right away with demo. Um, it's not a good weapon to buy by itself. You don't want to only have the Pulverizer with demo. If you are thinking of doing that, then it's probably D tier. It really won't help you out that much. You don't want to be that close to a lot of things with demo. Um, if you're buying it later on with the six weight and just the idea that you're going to block with it, it's okay then. Um, then it's probably like B tier from. It's fine. Then moving on to Firebug's weapons. We've got the Flamethrower, and the Flamethrower upgraded is really, really good. Uh, at 7 weight, it does pretty high damage, really high damage per second. It's one of Firebug's best weapons, and I think unupgraded, it's probably S tier. Um, you really don't need to throw upgrades into the Flamethrower. It's pretty crazy without upgrades. It doesn't scale really high with upgrades, and it's... Like, at 7 weight, you're still able to fit quite a few things uh, in your loadout, so pretty good. Uh, next weapon is the uh, Scorcher. This weighs 4. 4 is also really nice. 4 is actually a really nice weight to have. Um, it's pretty good unupgraded. It does good damage. Um, the floor fires can do tons of damage per second, especially if you're running ground fire, uh, which you probably would be if you're going to take this weapon. And... It's not a bad weapon. Um, you can run out of ammo somewhat easily with it, though. I think I'm going to put this probably into A tier. It's still pretty good on upgraded. Then we have the MAC-10. The MAC-10 weighs 4 weight, which is great. That makes it very easy to uh, use on a lot of loadouts. Very flexible. It does its job just fine with its uh, without upgrades, where it's just made to kill small things. It does that very well. Um, large capacity magazine, especially with firebugs, you're likely going to be running the high capacity fuel tanks. So 64 round magazine, that's great. Um, I see no reason why this wouldn't also be into like high A tier. Very strong weapon, unupgraded. Um, and which was kind of funny because I put almost all the firebug weapons when they're fully upgraded, like into B tier, at least a tier three, because they're... They honestly don't really need the scaling. They're already good without upgrades, and then upgrades don't necessarily increase them. They might just increase their weight, and then that makes you so you have to limit your options. All right, and then we have the uh, incinerary rifle. This is the exact same thing as the M16, just it shoots out fire grenades. It has the same rate of fire, the same damage per shot, same sight, same recoil pattern. Um, just does fire damage, so it does damage over time, and then it's fire grenade... Uh, does direct damage, fire damage, explosion damage, and then floor fire damage, dealing damage to everything around it. Still a very good weapon, even unupgraded, and it probably also belongs to be right up here into A tier. Um, six weight, plenty of loadouts. Um, it's good for killing trash. I don't think it's as good as like the MAC-10 is, so I'm going to put it lower than the MAC-10, just because the MAC-10 weighs less and does... Pretty much the same job, but this one also has the fire grenade, so it, it can do more damage. So, I feel like they're both A tier, but the MAC-10 is a little bit higher. Uh, up next is Gunslinger. And Gunslinger only has two weapons here, so Deagles. Deagles unupgraded are still really strong. Um, like 90 damage or almost 100 damage a shot is really high. High rate of fire. You don't necessarily need upgrades with the Deagles but upgrades with the deagles make them better um i don't uh i still think these are probably going to be s tier they're lower s tier than they were fully upgraded fully upgraded they're better but even unupgraded they're still really good then we got the rhinos um upgraded unupgraded rhinos are actually probably better than upgraded rhinos uh, upgraded rhinos just don't scale super great um and the base damage rhinos are all right the shrapnel damage does take some getting used to. They're still okay weapons, but they're nothing, but they're not super special. So I'd probably put them like B tier. They're okay. And then we have, uh, oh wait, I forgot a medic weapon entirely. I actually, I forgot two medic weapons. What the heck? I forgot two of these. Um, let's see. Unupgraded Hemogoblin. You still get all the benefits of 
the unupgraded Hemogoblin. Uh, it still has pretty good healing darts. It doesn't weigh too much then, so it's more flexible. And you still get the debuff effects. So, like, upgraded... I, I still think this is probably, like, A tier. Maybe lower A tier. Higher A tier when upgraded. And then the Mind Reconstructor unupgraded is actually probably better unupgraded than it is upgraded. Um, because it just makes it more flexible and you're likely going to be using this for its poison and for its heals. Um, for allies to run through or enemies to run through and deal damage for them. So you're not really going to care about the increase in damage all that much with this gun. Um, so it, it's probably still like B tier. It's an okay weapon. This whole tier 3 weapons unupgraded are actually... A lot of them are just really good unupgraded. I didn't think that I'd put so many in like S, A, and B tier. I haven't put any in C and D tier yet. Because I don't think any of them actually belong there so far. Uh, sharpshooter weapons. We've got the unupgraded M14. The M14 unupgraded is okay. It's got like 80 damage. It fires at an okay rate of fire. Um, it's all around just kind of okay. Um, it still has a kind of a nice weight unupgraded. So I guess B tier? It's honestly better with upgrades than it is unupgraded which is why I'd put it higher, at least with upgrades. Um, unupgraded, though, it's still a pretty good option if you just get to Tier 3 weapons. You probably won't be disappointed with it. Um, and then the Mosin. Uh, Mosin unupgraded is actually really good. It has pretty high damage with a reasonable weight then. Um, it does allow you to have certain other weapons. It's... It's still ability to it still has the ability to parry and it has the ability to stab things, which is still really good. Um, I'd probably put this one also into higher A tier. The Mac 10 four weight is still all right. Uh, I would put it lower for support or for SWAT than I would for Firebug though. Um, unupgraded, upgraded. I think it's actually better than upgrading it for SWAT or for Firebug. Sorry, it's better for SWAT to upgrade it than it is for Firebug to upgrade. I should say. Um, so for SWAT, unupgraded, it's probably like B tier. It's still an okay weapon. There's nothing really wrong with it, but it gets better once you upgrade it. So it'd probably be A tier with upgrades, B tier without upgrades. That is the only, okay, that is the only submachine gun that's also tier three. So the nail gun, unupgraded, the nail gun is okay. Um, it's not as good as when it's fully upgraded because then it just has more damage. So I'd probably put it also into A tier. <laughs> it's fine, but... It's, it's still a pretty good weapon, but maybe not as good as others. Um, the M45, the UMP is actually really good without upgrades. Um, it's probably one of SWAT's best weapons without upgrades because its upgrades don't scale all that high and it already has pretty high base damage. So I'd probably also put this one, I guess, probably also into A tier. There's a lot of weapons going to A tier. Maybe I'd put this one actually, nah, I'd, I wouldn't put it to S tier, but it, it'd probably be like, mid B, mid A tier. Um, it's still just a good gun even without upgrades. P90, I'm probably also going to put into A tier. Um, like, big magazine is nice. It has okay damage. It doesn't particularly scale that well, and it has lightweight at only 5. It actually fits into more loadouts on upgraded than it does upgraded for, like, more practical uses. Um, so, yeah. A lot of these weapons I... Do, I'm really surprised at. All right, and then the freeze thrower is also better unupgraded than it is upgraded. Um, it's kind of a strange pattern that a lot of tier three weapons are like this. So this one's probably also just going to go into B tier. It's good, but it's not as good as... Like, it, it's very good if you get into a game and you have enough money to buy it and you want to support the team. It's pretty good then. Um, outside of that, it's still okay. It fits in an okay amount of weight. Um, and you can still fit quite a few things around it. And if you want to be a supportive player, you can still use it to pretty good effect. Yeah, I guess this is where I would rank all the tier three weapons unupgraded, which is really surprising. I figured I'd put some of them into D and C tier, but I didn't put any of them in there, which is bizarre to me. Um, I think all of them are pretty much worth buying if you don't intend on upgrading them and usually intend on using them as a secondary weapon. That's why most of these scored so high. Let's just take some of these examples. So like the Hemoclobber just fits in such an easy amount of weight to 
use. And it's so good as soon as you're available to tier three weapons that it's pretty much S tier. The AK is similar to that, where the AK is really good for tier three weapons and unupgraded. It's actually arguably better than upgraded because upgrading really has diminishing returns. So it's sitting at six weight with its good damage and really high damage per second actually makes a, a lot of sense for it to stay in A tier. A lot of these weapons are like that, though, where it looks like the MAC-10 is an excellent sidearm um, for both SWAT and for uh, Firebug unupgraded. It's not going to be your main weapon with either of them, but it makes for a pretty good sidearm with them. It's also similar to like the bug shots, which got a pretty low rating. They got the lowest rating out of the tier three weapons um, in terms of their usefulness for support. But as a sidearm for four weight, that's still pretty usable. So this is um, very interesting. Most of these are like the best sidearms or best weapons to not upgrade if you want to upgrade other weapons because almost all of them fit quite well with that so i guess i'm gonna keep them like this this is gonna be very interesting um tell me what you guys think about a lot of the tier three weapons unupgraded for classes um i mean unupgraded for classes assuming you're gonna buy them right away i guess pulverizer just wins the worst award for demo because you don't want to be uh only running demo with only a you don't want to be running demo with only a pulverizer. But aside from that, like none of these weapons are bad if it's just like you just barely got to tier three weapons and you bought them. With uh, the other classes, it, like if you got to tier three medic, bought a medic shotgun, perfectly fine, perfectly normal. If you got to tier three weapons and bought uh, rhinos instead of deagles, still an OK option. Uh, if you bought the, you know, the M16 or any of the assault rifles that are tier three better options than like the tier two assault rifles so very interesting um i'm going to be doing tier four and tier five weapons i'm not going to be splitting up into two parts like these other videos have been though i think that's more important for the tier two and tier three weapons because they fit more if you're going to go for tier four or tier five weapons you're probably going to keep them i mean tier five you can't upgrade anyway so it's just going to be comparing them as to how good I think they actually are and what kind of loadouts you would probably be using with them. Um, so, yeah, be on the lookout for those videos in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.